I'm Sean. And I'm Mark. Welcome Hello. to Thursday, Thursday night. Thursday. Boys. Have Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. Cheers. It's been a long week, brothers. Yes. It has been. Man, you think it was Friday. <laughs> it almost is, so that's good. I wish it were Friday, but that's yep. all right. I'm happy it's Thursday because here we are and we got a ton of people online already. Let's get to them. Say that. hi. How many do we have anyway? Uh, I see a bunch of people. Yeah, I'm going to back up and see. Let's give credit to the first person on. Who Scott Spradum is the first on. Oh, wait, no, that was Steve. Eh, Steve A. Again. Gosh, One house calls was in early hey, too. He was number two last week. Yeah, <laughs> we're glad to see you guys. Whiskey Crusaders Crusader. was in ahead of time. Um, fight for sound. Yeah, Whiskey music. Before he started, yeah. Good evening, Bob. Bob H is in. Greg. I see Greg's on too. Yes, Trooper. Greg. We did. We we were a minute late, but we we're working on something really special for the show tonight. So we had. It's to gonna be pretty second. funny. You you'll like it. Yeah. It was yeah. last minute. Throw it through, and Drew's like, "Okay, I'll make it work." <laughs> Hi, Eric. Drew, check it out. Hoagie Bears! Hoagie, hoagie, hoagie! Hoagie Bears! Happy birthday, Hoagie Bears! Is it early happy birthday? Is it, early happy is it birthday? too early to say happy birthday? Let's cheers them anyway. It's happy never too early for happy birday. birthday. We're going to see you next week. Exactly. With my wife, it's happy birthday month. It's her month. Mm. you got to kind of do the whole thing. So, one day, two days, no big deal. We will mm. celebrate tonight. Well, that's pretty good. Um, because... Uh, you and I, I don't, and you won't be here next I, week, yeah, so we're we'll. celebrating you tonight. It's going to be the Andrew show next week. I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> you boys better tune good. in for that. <laughs> Andrew and Dr. He'll have special guests. He'll, he'll use stream yards for the first time next week and have guests on with him, perhaps. I'll hook, I'll hook him up. We'll see how that goes. He likes pressure. Unfortunately, we're, we're all traveling pressure. for work, so it would be yeah. really hard. Oh, I don't know if we're ready to actually try to pull four of us together virtually. That, that might be... Oh. yeah. We'll see what happens. You know, the nice thing about StreamYards, because I've got everybody else using it now, it's just easy to dial in. You say, hey, there's a link, and they, they call in, and really easy peasy. So maybe one of good. us are on location, and we can call in using, using our phone, and see yeah. what happens. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see. But uh, so welcome to Thursday, everybody. Let's ask the quick question and get started on the right foot. What are y'all drinking? What's in your dram tonight as you pull up to the virtual bar? I am drinking... What is this? No, I'm drinking something no, else. Drinking something else. No, I'm, no, drinking I'm drinking a different. Uh, it's an away. SMWS. Uh, is this the triple whammy? Yeah, triple whammy, which is 5.69, 17-year-old, 58.1% ABV. So um, it was just on the bar. I figured it needed to be killed because... And you killed it. The wounded, wounded zebra. That's what we do around you, here. You, you know what else we're killing today? A lot of Glenmos. What? That's what I'm drinking. There's a lot of Glenmos sitting on the bar for a very specific reason. I'm drinking the Lasanta 12 year. That's what I'm drinking right now. It's Hoagie's I mean, birthday's really tomorrow. I'm drinking that. We hit it. I I'm drinking the Lasanta as well, and it's it's tasty. It's a really tasty drink. I mean, it's 12 year old, but it's really easy to drink. And... Well, let's talk about our video from this Is week. Is that what you want to jump into already? All right. Yeah, well, 100% let's, let's get into that's, it. That's what we did. Um, so, I would like to start with the fact that. Yes. When we recorded that video, we, we did a full, what, about half hour, 35 minute video with Dan? Oh, we did because he went, he went on a run. But you guys um, understand, Dan is in his own world. If you, if you ever get a loves. chance to go watch Dan talk at his shows, you sit yes. back and you go, wow. You're in awe. I mean, the guy can just, he's on autopilot. He just, he's smart, he's articulate, he has really great ways to explain things. So he kind of, we, we didn't really set him up very well. And he, we, he started up the, his engine and, and boom, free floated. And it's awesome. And so we, if you're a patron, actually, we did an uncut of that oh, yeah. for you. And you can see that whole thing in awe. It's awesome. 
it, um, it's it's a lot of fun. It was it was fun just standing here yeah. listening to him. But we got through the video, and Drew was like, "That was good, but that's not quite what I wanted to do." And so we had to reshoot some stuff. And and so I think it came out okay. It wasn't quite what Drew had in mind. I don't think. I, I don't think anybody was on the same page with it when we shot it. But it's a lot of good information. It is. Um, it is. I will say that the one cool thing about Glenmo that other whiskey companies don't do that I never really thought about too much was they do a horizontal e- expression. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, everything is 12 years. It's all based off of the 10 It year, all starts here. And it's just variations on the right. theme versus it. most distilleries. It's it, a it's a, platform. it's a, yeah, it's a, a, a time wise, you know, this is a 15, this is an 18. And so it changes not just by the cask, but by the number of years that it's in the cask. And so there's some extra variables where this lineup, if you're doing a tasting, it's really interesting because it's like, okay, well, the here, here's here's yeah. the sherry cask versus the port cask, right? And so you can, and here's the original. And so you, you get, you know, a, an idea of how that influences what you're tasting in the final product in every whiskey. It, well, it's just interesting. So you, so you spend 10 years in one cask, you spend another couple of years in a different cask, and you hit... The uh, Asante, you hit the Nectar. I mean, you hit all these ones that are really the same original base and just been finished differently. And so, yeah, you can definitely tell the core. So you start out with the tenure, and you get that. Re- you get all their kind of signature. You get the new make in there. You get their base barrel influence, and then you, you compare that to one of those twelve years. It's like, oh, that's exactly what the barrel does. That's that's what the finishing does. Not to say that other distilleries don't do that, because I'm sure there's got to be some that do, but that's Glenmo prides himself on it. That's where they start. Everything starts at the same point, same base, and it moves from there, whereas a lot of other distilleries are, you know... They're all over the board, and that's good because they're yeah. they're artistic and they're they they're different. There's a variety, but they have a variety too. Glenmo's got a variety. It's yeah. just I, I, it's interesting. They, to me. they take some of the variables out, so you can really see what that particular thing does. Sure. Yeah, that's one of the things I love about that is you know as an engineer and scientist, when you think about supply chain, that's money because you you just keep putting away that ten year. You know, you keep putting away the That's same true. barrels. And then That's true. you can alter based on what the market is. Do they like more sherries right now? Well, you only have two-year lag That's now. Good point. You, do you like more of the, the, the wine cast? You, you, you know, you, you get a two-year delay as opposed to a 12-year delay in what you put in the barrel. You know, like Macallan. Right. They're all sherry casts the whole time. So if, if sherry goes away, they're in a world of hurt. Which one's going from 12 to 14? Uh, it's a ribbon. Yeah. It's a ribbon, right. So Hoagie had asked a question why Nectador doesn't uh, doesn't have an age statement, and I'm, I I can't remember if we asked him. I thought we talked about it. We we did not go through that. I don't think. No, no. I don't recall the answer to that one. So you know, man, these are great questions. But you know what? So Travis we know a guy who can uh, answer so, it. You know, here Actually, let, let, let me just say this before we get too far. Um, Dan might be honey. He might be honeymooning on here in the chat. Uh, if he's not, oh, he I'm may be right in, a, in a little while. And so these are awesome questions, Travis Hoagie. And if he doesn't come on the chat, I'll, we'll ask him anyway. We talked to him quite a bit. We we text and email back and forth. Love to to ask these questions and get you guys the answers because they're they're valid questions. Think, that's for sure. I think we did talk about at one point where uh, if you're going for a certain flavor standpoint, the way they use those. Of wine barrels, the influence may be too powerful if you leave them in there too long. So you want to put them in those casks until they're ready, right? Not for a certain amount of age. And so, depending on how how powerful the casks are, how how fresh the casks are, you may need to you may only need six months to get the flavor profile you want. And if you go two years, then you may you may burn it out. <clears throat> and, right. And you just you ruin the wine, you ruin the whiskey because it's too much wine. The other thing too is that I thought was kind of nice is that they're they're really thinking about the market too, because even though the new, the 14 year and the La Santa are kind of getting a little bit of upgrade, they're actually still being competitive. They're bringing La Santa down a little bit well, and yeah. they'll stay in the same at two more years. Yeah, which is impressive. That's, that's pretty right. cool. So, another thing about Glenmore that I really find impressive, and I'm sure they're not the only distillery to do it, but they, they actually have a program where they own the cask from. Root to, to, to yeah, barrel, from tree to barrel, from tree to barrel. I mean, they actually own the the, the trees uh, while in the stand, 
in, in Missouri, right? I mean, it's the way I understand it. I know for, for the uh, Astar they did. I don't know about right. in general. Well, the Astar, uh, those trees. Those are special trees. Well, yes. but those barrels, they, they use that in 10. Right. They just don't use it. Com it's not totally those oh, barrels. That's, that's what I thought. So, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So some of those barrels, no matter what, are in original. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's true. Actually, if you guys aren't following him on Facebook, by the way, you probably should because he just got back from a, an epic Scotland tour. Great pictures. Killing me, man. He yeah. was all... It, Glenn Modan. Yeah, was. Glenn Modan. He was... Great pictures from Scotland. Um, and, and, and while we're on that, a, a quick... Quick shout out to our good friend KB, who is in Scotland. He is on the island of Isla right now. Oh, he's he's snoozing right now. He is he's snoozing on Isla. on Isla with his wife, and he's been texting us pictures, which just, I mean, it's yeah, wonderful. The weather's see. perfect. I'm, I'm loving it. They're having a good time. The but it's also in. painful because I'm working, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he I would rather be there. <laughs> yeah, he's sending pictures of the, of the, the woman with the um, sample thief, you know, pulling whiskey out. Right. Out of the barrel. It's like, hey, and, and he's got the. It's a long and blah, 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 blah. Like, what is that? Have you ever had. Uh, great. Have you ever had something aged in a port something cask? I'm like, what? I'm trying I? to talk him into buying a cottage on Iowa, so just <laughs> guys say a prayer for <laughs> uh, Long term. I'm long term here. Yep. Um, hey, Bud Matthews is online. Sunday evening scotch just started following. Yes. So. Bud, you good. are blessed to have me here. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. See, Tom was paying attention. Dan said twenty percent of the casts from the ting, from the star, the star. were in the tingier. Yeah. So, yeah, and it's good stuff. So, uh, you know, I enjoyed the whole line. I mean, and then when you get into the what do you call it, the premium, which is Prestige. fancy for ex for expensive, uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but there's a lot. You know, you get into the signet and you know some of those expressions. They're great. Hey, they so, have a lot more out there too in that range than I thought. The premium range. Oh yeah, like, yeah, they yeah, have like yeah, eight yeah. or so. Out right, there. those aren't considered core. No. I mean, let's it's be honest. Once in a while, the, the signet's probably one of the best non age statement scotches oh, you ever. Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. It's just so unique. Honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but mm. even their travel retail, we were lucky enough to have a couple bottles uh, on the bar for that. And and you know, uh, Glenmore is a great. All around still, I love it. But there's a couple that I like more than others, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And Signet's mm -hmm. probably one of my favorite. Um, I think that it's good. It's a good, stable, affordable label that you can try different expressions. Because some labels you get into and you're like, well, I can afford their entry level, right? And you right. find that interesting. But then to go up that next step or two, you're like, well, that's a pretty significant investment in money. Whereas these are more like, well... They're, they're really, you know, it's 60 bucks, it's 65 bucks. Yeah. You know, I can afford to try that one too. And, and offer you a variety of scotch, a yeah. variety of flavor, a variety of palate. In other words, you're not just getting the same thing over and over and over again. Even though it starts from the same base, they're at least giving you a different bottle for, for yeah. equivalent prices. So, so I think that they do a decent job, and, and I think that they're definitely worth people trying out. So mm -hmm. um, so that's the Glenmo line. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed Dan because he's a great guy. Um, and, and very informative. I mean, every time we talk to the guy, I feel like I've learned it's, something. You, you're, it's never a dull moment, right? It's always something. No, he's an awesome guy to have a dram with. I'm serious. I, I don't, even if you don't want to talk about the Glenmo lineup, uh, to sit down and have a glass of whiskey with Dan, uh, you're going to learn something. Awesome yeah. conversation. Yeah. If you just want to talk to him about how to taste whiskey or yeah. just the business in general, where things are going, or you know, you have a specific question about you know distillery process or something, like he's a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, so, and stay so. tuned in the future. We're gonna get a hold of uh, of the new Ardbeg. Yeah, Cameron. Ambassador Cameron. Um, we're we're gonna have him on the show here in the near future. Really looking forward to grabbing a hold of him. There's a charismatic kid that's just grabbing it by the you know tail and, and running with it. I, he's he's, he's a ball awesome. of energy. Fun. You we're talking about this. I saw the Streamlab just popped up. Yep. So, oh, what's up? What's up with this? So we, um, you know, as part of the uh, the Glenmore for, for Dummies 18? series, we thought it would be kind of fun to do a little salsa giveaway tonight. So uh, Salsa giveaway? So what we got there? It's an 18-year-old salsa, Glenmo. That's extremely rare. Salsa. Good it's, year. Single what, batch reserve. What's um, uh, some? 43. Yep. 43%. Yeah, sure. And so all you've got to do, Extremely rare. Streamlabs Extremely is basically rare. explaining it to you. So if you're actually on the live show as of right now, um, just hit uh, exclamation mark raffle and you will be entered into the giveaway. All you have to do is enter that. 
for an, in, within the next 30 minutes, uh, and then it will close, and then we'll auction off our, uh, our winner here. But, yeah, uh, so 30 minutes you're going to give it? In 30 minutes. All right. Okay. So keep an eye on this guy. This could be yours. This bottle of salsa could be yours. All right. You know All what right. it's time for. Mm. Uh, what are we doing? Hang on. I might need a drink. Why don't need you get a, another glass before we start our... Uh, oh, yeah, our next... You just need a bottle? No, I need a glass of something to put in. I need something to put in this glass here. All right. Well, what do you want? Mm. We don't have any scotch open, so mm. we have to open some for you. Go big or go home. Or the news. Um, What's next? Um, that's open. Oh, that's not open. You um, know what? Let me get some of that American SMWS up there. That 13 year. Yeah, what's barbecue going on? With fish yeah, barbecue and fishes. Let me see what's going on with that. Uh, rinse that thing out a little bit. So, what what do we have on the agenda here, guys? Let's see. Do we have people uh, entering? I see. Oh, tons of people blowing in. Yep. yep. For sure. Okay. We're all just waiting on you, man. So I was, look, I was looking to see if there's any any new information going on. Barbecue and fish tank, baby. With um, on the on the live chat, so I don't. I, all right. So all what's going on? All right, it's time. It's, time? it's time for what? News. Uh, time Good for evening. The news. Good evening. Welcome to Scotch in the News. I'm Sean. We're going to go live on location to Mark. Hey. So, Mark, is it? Um, we're having trouble hearing you out there. Are you... Technical difficulties. <laughs> I guess he's good. I guess he might be okay. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to come back to him on that one. Uh, so. All, right. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about some actual news here. All right. We were uh, we were messing around before the show and thought that would be entertaining. We funny. were entertained. <laughs> We're all juvenile, we know it. Yeah, all right, so, so let's talk about... Uh, this would give you some pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys would have pelted me with pretzels, that I would, would have been, been good. good. We missed that one. All right, I'm going to throw this first sketch in the news towards you. Okay. Uh, because I think that it's uh, near and dear to your heart. So let's talk about Kuboken. Kuboken. The Boken. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Matin. It is near and dear to our heart. We've been to that distillery. There we go. It's up right now. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. What's going so on they with have, that? So they've got three new expressions coming out, right? New uh, bottles and everything. Huh? Yeah. They're, and they, They've got fancy twisted bottles. They're cool. They look sharp. Uh, so it, it looks like a little bit of an upgrade to the lineup. Uh, so we got Signature and then Creation Number 1 and Creation Number 2. So Creation Number 1... Black Isle Brewery Import Stout. Imperial Stout. Yeah, so I, I was reading about these today. Did you read about the three varieties? Yeah, a little can you, bit. Can you, can you discuss a little bit about what, they, what they're doing? Uh, it, it see, it, so if I remember correctly, I actually read this article like two or three days ago. Okay. Um, so they, they're doing their signature, and then the Creation 1 and Creation 2 are based off of the signature? Yeah, so the, sig right? the signature is their basic. So Tomatin, one, one week a year, does a, a peated whiskey. And that's their Kuboken. But then they, the Creation 1 and Creation 2 are like based on the original Kuboken, but then they've done extra maturation or finishing or something in these weird casks. And one is like a beer and one. And so they take, they take the Kuboken, they put it into two different casks or two or three different casks. I don't remember exactly what they are. And then they marry them back together to, for to bottling. And so it's, it, the Creation number 2 kind of scares me because mm -hmm. it's like a, a stout and a sweet wine. Yeah. So they marry them back together. I'm not sure about that one. But the other one, I don't remember. If we bring it back up, you can see it. You can see what the cast are. I have to are. assume so they it's, it's Japanese uh, shochu and uh, European version oak. Yeah. So they've got a little, maybe that's a little that's more spicy unique. and... That one I'm cast. interested that's in. I, I was with you. I thought that the stout, like anytime you do whiskeys in stout barrels... I, I'm not a fan of it. It. I'll try it. Maybe... Like but maybe, but I'm not. I'm but I remember the I the price win. point was fairly steep for those two. It I was believe like forty and sixty dollars, forty for the signature and like sixty for the other ones. So speaking of that, right? I know I know bourbon beer is is huge, right? Different things there. We've still yet to open this. No, it's open. No, actually, no, we it's open. open. Yeah, I thought we didn't have. We, it. Tried, we tried it. This is a like, like, we, uh, we liked it so much we haven't tried it again. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, IPA cast for Scott. So there. I mean, it's not the first one. Out yeah. There, no, there's lots of beer. Beer. You know, and even the 
the bourbon barrel beers are like it just it doesn't seem to work well. No, uh, it's it's almost overpowering on both directions. Um, like the the flavors don't quite match up right. I'm not sure about that, but I'll try it. I mean, I'd I'd kind of like to get a sample of it and see how it how it goes. Yeah, I mean, several um, people are talking about the uh, Jameson Caskmate Stout. Sure, uh, my brother-in-law has got all the. There's there's m- multiple Caskmates when it comes to Jameson. Yeah, the stout isn't. When's when's this hitting the, the U.S.? Do you know? Did uh, say? No, we don't know. We don't have that. So they've just started bottling this. They're, this well, is just the it's announcement. All, it's on the website, and it's all yeah. But it's really technically. I don't know what it's hitting just stores yet. or though. I don't remember seeing that in the just, article that uh, I read. So it's July too 19. bad we don't have Mike around because I'm yeah. very curious to get his take on it because you know he does. You know that was one of his first loves when it comes yep. to scotch, and I want to hear what he's got to say about it. I'm sure he knows about it. Um, talking about him, I scored him a bottle of SMWS. I, I gave him his ball Blair today, uh, so he stopped by on his way home from work to pick that up. But I don't know. He maybe he opened it. Who knows. <laughs> Well, let's talk about okay, uh, next, next a different Scotch topic that I kind of was interested in was the uh, the Scotch Whiskey Association. Uh, so they had that lawsuit okay. against the distillery in Virginia, and they recently dropped the lawsuit. Back so, up. What's the original lawsuit? Uh, the distillery was bottling uh, their whiskey. Uh, it, it left out the E, so it was spelled whiskey just with the Y like they do in Scotland. Right. And it had Highland on the bottle. Like and so, so the SWA Virgin, was taking Virginia offense, whiskey. taking offense to the fact they were trying to really look like a Scotch. Yes. Well, they used the word Highland on their label, and they spelled it the way Scotch spells it, as opposed to every other whiskey in the world. Right. But oh, true. So they they dropped the suit, and so I, now I guess the distillery and the Scotch Whiskey Association are working out their differences, and they're going to come to some sort of. Amicable uh, yeah, so resolution. I, I know the, the distillery was, they were taking some Highland Scotch and blending it with their Virginia whiskey. So that's why the, the distillery too chose to do that Highland Virginia whiskey. They didn't call it Scotch, they just used the word Highland. And if you're from Virginia or other ones, there's a Highland in Virginia, so I can understand that, but whatever. I mean, it, it is a little bit, I can't believe they're the only ones that can use the word Highland in any whiskey in the world. Even though I know the Scotch Whiskey Association has kind of registered that title in uh, in the U.S. as kind of a it's a it's a trade or, thing, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I I get it, and I get them wanting to defend because it's a reputational thing. Yes. You know, as soon as you kind of let somebody skate on it, then everybody tries to do it, and, right? And you end up with a inferior, damaged brand, yeah, an inferior product out there. You know, pseudo representing what you're doing, and right. that's just not what they want. So, Absolutely. so I get that. Uh, last topic. Okay. Uh, so what's what's the deal with this log of one? Because I did not read up on on that. The, yeah, up on what's it. up with log of one? I'll tell you what's up. I found a dusty log of one this week. Get up yeah, with that. Put that, that bad. I'm stumbling into some old liquor store in Indianapolis and found a distiller's edition. What was it? It was 90, a 1996 distiller's edition. I'll take that. <laughs> well, so I, I haven't read too much about it yet, but basically Lagavulin has releasing a 10-year-old expression only in travel retailer duty. Oh. Okay, so... so you know, what's that all about? I don't know yet. The, the, it's interesting to see that they're try, trying to pull something different. They had the, the 8, they had the 9 in the Game of Thrones series. Right, they have the, they 12, had the 12. They have the 16. So... And they have 16, they have Distiller's Edition, which is 16. Right. So there's, and now there's a t- travel retail 10. So the whiskey is said to be initially sweet and salty on the palate with an intense spicy and smoky finish. Sounds great. <laughs> Yeah, sounds it like sounds great. My my first question: Anytime I see anybody say they they're releasing it to travel retail, to me that's kind of ambiguous because you can say you're releasing it to travel retail only in Europe or only in Asia. Just because it's in travel retail doesn't mean we're going to find it in any U.S. duty free right. station. You know what I mean? It, so travel retail is like travel retail where. You know, where do I got to travel to get this bottle? It tells me they made a small quantity of it. They're testing the market. So, that's probably your absolute right. That's exactly what Johnny Walker did with Double Black. Mm-hmm. And, and so that segues yep. in, into, I'm not sure if we're in Jen or not, but tonight's yep. topic, right, really yep. is, is kind of marketing scotch. And it seems yes. like we, we all know, 
you know, whiskey right now is super popular. It's, it's, it's super right. hot, right? And there, there is going to be a Nick Offerman version. <laughs> That's of what Bud is, yeah. Eight, and Steve was Can't about wait. It, right? So <laughs> if Steve Offerman, obviously, he's been kind of pre-marketing it for Lagavulin for yeah. years. They're taking on to that. I think the big hitter here is Johnny Walker, right, with the White Walker series, the Agio. Yeah. They hit the market strong, although, yeah, although we're not big up. fans of it. No, no, no. It's not just Johnny Walker. The Blade Runner, the Jane Walker, the Johnny Walkers, they, they've been yeah, hitting them yeah. out of the park with this for a while. Well, not just the White Walker. And then on top of that, Diageo, which we sure. them, right? they've got a uh, Walking Dead bourbon coming out. So what is going on, guys, with all, I mean, is it, is, are they really capitalizing on the, the kind of, the idea of the hot topic of whiskey and the hot topic of something movie-wise yep. or TV show to kind of even inspire more sales? Yes. All right. Makes sense. Uh, my, they, my, my big disappointment is, is now you're starting to see corporate capitalism take over the direction of the whiskey, which to me is sad. Inferior product. Has it ever? I, it, well, not. no, but I mean, I, I want, at the, at the heart of it, I want the, the production, the quality of the, what, what they produce from each distillery to come from the heart of that distillery, not from some guy sitting in, behind a desk in another country, for God's sakes, that says, hey, we're going to do this because it's all about this final... In other words... The, the guy that's making the stuff doesn't even have any input into it anymore. He's just like, well, I've been told to freaking put this product out, so grab yeah. those 10 barrels over there some, and these 10 some, barrels. Some 23-year-old guy comes and says, all right, we need a Star Wars whiskey. Exactly. How do we, we, we can we can market it, they're going to give us, they're going to pay for it. Let's make a Star Wars whiskey. Octomore have a Death Star whiskey. Yeah, so I mean, okay, so what do you, how do you create a Star Wars whiskey? What do you want it to taste like? Well, it's got to be um, good and bad because, you know, there's the Rebels and the... And well, yeah, yeah, yeah. they have to partner with the series, too. I mean, technically, well, sure. whoever owns the series, right? White Walker, Walking Dead. Well, so that's the question. Game is of it? Thrones. Not going to do a Star Wars one because Disney's there's, not going to fly on that. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> no. Well, so, this, so the question is, who goes to who? Diageo goes to them. You think? Why, why I think would... Diageo tells them. Oh, well, that's a fair point. Let me have the bottle. The bottle. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. Andrew Sproul, I say no. What do you say? Wait, wait, do the marketing wait, people question. even taste it? I wonder. I honestly say the, no. The marketing people wouldn't know good whiskey if it bit them. Here's, here is my problem with this, and I get it from a corporate perspective. There is some accountant yeah, somewhere or some VP that got convinced by a marketing know. person that this was a good idea. And I would say... As a business person, from a <laughs> from a business perspective, this why would you drink? That? No, don't. Why, so so it, Mark's giving me a pour up. Don't a drink it. It's, it's awful, I and you're know. gonna dirty a glass. I'll for dirt. That? I'll wash the damn thing. I'm giving <laughs> it. It's not even worth dirtying a glass for. So Mike's anyway. Go ahead. You're Every saying. time you try it, you're like, "This is horrible." I don't have to try it. I know it's horrible. It's the only whiskey I want to give. I'm a zero forgiving. To. Well, but that's the problem. So. I like Johnny Walker Black. Johnny Walker Black is a staple bottle. There's nothing wrong with drinking Johnny Walker Black, right? And there's some other Johnny Walkers in the line that I've I've really enjoyed. This is not good whiskey, right? And they've put it in this. It's like Conor McGregor. They've put it in this marketing. You know, I mean, they've spent a lot of money on this bottle. And then they turn around and sell this thing for twenty bucks. No, forty and, bucks. Forty. And, now, now it's nothing. But it should be like eight bucks. But you know, the bottle turns blue when you put it in the freezer. Like well, that's that's the first thing it tells you that whoever decided this is. I mean, who f puts whiskey in the freezer? Right. And well, so now this has I did been in high school. This has been successful enough that they're releasing the Song of Fire and the Song of Ice. Right. right? I, I hope the Song of Fire is cinnamon flavored. That would make me really happy. <laughs> Not that I like cinnamon whiskeys that much, just because I think that it's probably worth that. That'd be hilarious. Um, but they're they're pushing this, and so now they've got this Walking Dead whiskey. That's a real thing too. So apparently it's successful enough. But I think you can kind of overplay your hand with this, right? Yes. Like you can't just put out whiskeys based off of whatever TV show is hot. It needs to have some sort of consistently yes. good product. If you're going to want to sell it over the long period of time, you should offer a good product. Well, and that's the interesting thing. Is that when you look at the Game of Thrones other bottles that had different distilleries, 
The Lagavulin Nine, they did a nice job on that. They That's didn't. Solid. They didn't cheat. They didn't. Nope. They didn't go with some no age statement Lagavulin. Uh, I guess I don't know if the distilleries have a an option of saying, all right, uh, Diageo comes in and says we need a bottle from you for Game of Thrones, and they say. All right. Well, the first thing I say is, let me check my supply. Well, and then they say, okay, well, then do I have taste, or, you know, flavor control or, you know, creative control over what goes in the bottle, or are you going to take that over? Well, I think Johnny Walker gave in to Diageo here too strongly. I don't think they had a choice to give in. Diageo owns them. They well, no, but the question do is, do they, do they have creative control of what goes in the bottle? I don't I mean, know. They may not have had creative control so, over what goes in the box. Right. But... Chad, you're absolutely right. If I said capitalism, it, it, capitalism is good. I'm all for capitalism. I'm saying corporate America. Corporate, corporate made a decision on the whiskey that went in a bottle, and I don't so, appreciate that. That's let, what I'm saying. Let me not, reframe. Not let me reframe this whole marketing yep. situation, right? So, hi Molly. <laughs> when I look, you know, when you read about Scotch history, right? If you pick up any book that talks about any distillery, there is this distillery started in 1847. And then it worked for 20 years, and then it closed down, and it was closed for 10 years, and then somebody else bought it, and then it was open for a while, and then it closed for a while, and there's these cycles of boom and bust. And, you know, it's a global economy now, so it's a little bit different than it was in the 1850s, but the same principle still applies. So, right now, whiskeys are hot, right? And I've, I've been in restaurants and dealt with alcohol long enough to have seen these, these cycles come through. So whiskeys, you know, bourbon, scotch, Japanese whiskey, they're brown, all brown super hot, right? Brown liquors, yeah. And so all of these distilleries are pumping a lot of money into their process facilities right now. They're adding stills. They're mm, adding yeah. washbacks. They're adding dunnage houses. They're pushing out as much whiskey as quickly as they can because the money's there, right? Yes. So I can make, hey, you know, instead of waiting an appropriate amount of time, eight or 10 or 12 years to right. put out a decent whiskey, I'm going to put this out instead. And I'm going to sell it for 40 bucks, which is what I sold my 12-year-old whiskey for before. But now I'm selling this three-year-old whiskey that's really not very good, but people are buying it. Oh, and right? not only that, it's heavy on the grain. And, I mean, come on. And oh, so yeah. <laughs> what happens is you get a whole generation that starts tasting whiskeys like this instead of whiskeys like this. Or that, or anything. Right? Well, mean, the thing yeah. is, right? and okay, so, so think about it this way, though. Now I go, I'm, I'm tasting this, I'm like, oh, Johnny Walker, it's, it's whiskey, it's good whiskey. And then you taste their black, and they're like, oh my God, black is the best whiskey I've ever tasted. But, but so what you're saying, you're just retraining the next but, generation? You know what? I had scotch when I was, let's call it 21. Yeah. <laughs> sure, that's a good number. I, yes. I was drinking Glenfiddich back then. Yeah. And... If you would have poured me a glass of this, I would have poured it on the floor. Even with uh, the ice and rocks and whatever, mixer, whatever you would do with it? Stop right there. Ask me if I was drinking whiskey on ice or rocks or water. Were you drinking a... No. Oh. <laughs> see, and that's <laughs> okay. 90% of people but at 21 don't here's drink here's the thing. Whiskey neat. If you were going to taste this and you really like this, and then you go to a little bit better bottle because everybody's like, oh, you got to try better whiskey, Right. This isn't this. So you're going to taste this and say, well, that's not really what I like to drink. I'm going to go drink vodka instead. I can't imagine <laughs> one single person trying that bottle and saying, oh, I'm really interested in scotch now. I want to explore more of scotch. Because that well, it's, it's good for a mixer. I mean, it really it makes it that. Well, I mean, if you're going to add like ginger beer or something to it. Think about this. Bitters and We can afford to buy better whiskey, right? When I was in college, I could not afford to buy a $40 bottle of whiskey all the time. So if I would have saved up my pennies and bought a $40 bottle of whiskey and it tasted like that, I am never buying another bottle of that. Yeah, And and so then you turn off a whole generation. So your marketing brings them in. The whole point of marketing is to get people to try your product. But if you don't have a good product when they try it, they're only trying it once. Yeah, that's correct. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so here's, here's a funny quote from Hoagie. Thank goodness for the new Johnny Walker label generation. Our reserves are safe. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the thing is, so I read the comment before that from Whiskey, Whiskey Crusaders, and, you say, and it's, it's so much grain, so nasty and metallic. You know what? I'm not yeah. going to disagree with the second half of your statement, but the grain, 
I can't agree with that anymore. I have had some damn good grain scotch. I, I have there there are some very good grain scotches out there, and I mean single grain. I'm not talking about it. You got to age them for thirty years though to get them good. No, okay, but you know what? Their thirty year old grains are in, in line with the same price as eighteen year old single malts. So I mean, it, yeah, it, you can afford them. It, it's possible, but and to be honest with you, what? blended uh, blended whiskeys always had grain in it, right? So the Chivas's of the world, the Doers of the world, the Johnny Walkers of the world. They all have some amount of grain, unless they say single malt, which yeah, what uh, Johnny Walker Green does. But or, I mean, or blended malt. Yeah. Yeah, but at, at the end of the day, I, I'm not gonna knock it for having grain. I will say, when you smell this, that's all I smell. Yeah, I, I don't smell any malt. Young grain. And I'll be fair. Yes. Truly fair to it. My first smelt, I thought it's not as bad as I remember. Smelt sure. again. Sure. When I'm, I, I'm when, following you. I, when I when I smelt it again, I was like, mm, great. Right, the third right. time I was like, yes, it's not as chemically smelling, if, if you will. It may have aged out. May may, have but then out. I tasted it, and I was like, yeah, no. And then you taste it. It. It, smell, it smells like acetone. Is it? Sure. It, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. When, as when as we first was. opened it, that's all I smelled. Yeah. Now I'm at least getting grain whiskey. It's not as but poker. then the acetone comes yeah, around. I mean, the nose is not as offensive as it was when you first opened the bottle. That's right. A, that's a good way. No, it. I think but it's I fairly did, offensive. But I don't think I want to put it in my no, mouth. No, I mean, I'm not saying it's <laughs> not. Effective. I'm just saying it's it, it, the air is helping it. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's got a clean, bright nose on it right now. So, so let's talk about some yeah. some better marketing. Good point, yeah. Eric. Real quick before okay. we go off topic. Yeah, we gotta get going. So we've got. You've got the White Walker, sure. which is arguably good marketing. It's getting people to buy that bottle. It's just not good whiskey in the bottle, right? Versus a company like Compass Box. Yes. So they spend a lot of money and a lot of effort putting really excellent packages together for their whiskeys. Unique. The artwork's cool. Like everything about it is just really good. And they've got a theme, but every bottle's yeah. different, and they're collectible in a sense. Yeah. It's a story behind them. And the whiskey in the bottle good. tastes good. It's good. Speaking of which, we should get one of those out. Where's uh, Where's the Stranger and Stranger? Oh, Ooh, that's not even scotch. You sure you want to go there? <laughs> this is a scotch true. malt whiskey. But I knew we had the box. It's spirit Sweet. and barley spirit. I know, but I'm just saying, my gosh, Sean, it's not even scotch. <laughs> But I'll, I'll give you credit on that one. I mean, uh, they're, they're, everyone has a marketing niche, right? We, we all look at scotch, and you can tell. I mean, it's funny now because we've been doing this for a while. We can, I can look at a bar from a distance a color on it. and pick out, right, who, what distillery is, yeah, who, sure. what you can pick, right? And then yeah. some of them obviously do a better job than others with, to your point, Compass Box is spend a ton of money on the marketing visual of it, right? Their yeah. labels are probably some of the best around. Yes, they are. Easily. Now, Bob Blair, their bottle <laughs> is their is their shape. Old Pulteney, right? Yeah. Their bottle is their marketing. Not the not the actual label, but the bottle. The bottle so, shape itself. Right. 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 This. So there's no kinds of really good marketing for personality, if you will. Right? So that, that's the good side of it because, you know, the whiskey is good for the most part. I think for the most part, what we're talking about really, though, is the, is the, the cheating side of using... And I guess I'm, I get to find one so, a marketing piece yet that's, that's selling the kind of right. ride the, the tailcoats of somebody that, you know. A couple, couple examples here and, and on both sides of it. Um, I thought Johnny, leave that out. I want to try a little nip of it here in a second. I thought Johnny Walker's, uh, we have not opened up the Blade Runner yet. Yeah. Uh, I have a bottle of the Blade Runner. Bought it when it first oh, came it's out. Black, have, it's, not, it's not different. Oh, it's higher. No, ABV. it's higher ABV. It's Johnny Walker Black at a higher ABV. That's not much of a change. That's not like this White Walker. That's crazy. The Jane Walker. I thought that was a good use of marketing. It, they're even saying it. it's Johnny Walker Black, but it was in, in, in honor of women's month. Hey, Roger that, man. I'm on for you. That's good. Good job on that. So when it comes to those kind of marketing ploys. I'm, I'm I'm cool with it. They, they they use it in the right manner. Yeah. It's just when they they bottle piss and lock it together with something that people have a, a tie to like and to, buy yeah. it. Right. That's where I, I really. And have. I don't even have a problem with that necessarily. Like I was actually excited when they did the White Walker because I was like, you know what? There's a ton of people that watch this show. Like a ton of people. Right. Right. And right. a lot of them aren't whiskey drinkers, and this may bring a lot of people. Into that fold, like that's not a bad thing, but if you're gonna if you're gonna bring right. them in and this is what you're gonna give them, that's a problem. Exactly. I mean, it was exciting to think that you guys are throwing a bigger net. You might pull some people into this that in this love, and that's what you give them. Ah, you just chased them off, right? 
But then on the second, on, on the completely different flip side, it's not using marketing like a Johnny Walker with the, with the White Walker or anything, but I, I, what, what comes to mind is um, using creative wording. Grand select reserve. So Lafroy pulled this one on us not too long ago. It was last year or two years ago, right? They came out, we were dying. The quarter cask, whoa, fell in love with Lafroy quarter cask. And then they came out with Lore, and we were like, all right, it's a little salty on the price, but it's worth it's it. Oh, I'm going to buy it. Then they came out with this one called Select, and of course we all jumped oh, out yeah, because the quarter cask oh, and the yeah. Lore. And we bought the Select, and we're like, oh whoa, my God, whoa. What marketing freaking intern bottled this? Why damn, they put select on it and made it sound special and I just want to freaking put it on the fire. I was so Watering. mad. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Marketing, man. Yeah. Well, like Mortlock, old and rare is neither old nor <laughs> rare. You can get it anywhere and it's not old whiskey. It's a non-age table. Right, right. So two things. One, uh, we have two minutes left in the raffle. If you've not entered yet, make sure you hit uh, exclamation part raffle right now. I just set it on as well. Um, and then Eric Waite said, that, to your point about the Johnny Walker Blade Runner, he said he has, he has two bottles. The a, extra higher ABV really helps. Um, it's a huge improvement. I don't, Eric, I don't killing that. me. So, now I'm going to have to go buy another bottle so I can open the one I have. <laughs> That's the spirit, brother. That's the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they want you just to do that. They just want you to do that. Here, you, buy another bottle. You know who it's time for. Is that? Well, yeah, we can do Is that Is it now. time? Yeah, sure. Oh, let me go see if I can find him. All right. He's here somewhere. And so I'm going to find, find a guy. guest. Where is that guy? Hey, Doc? 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 Hey, Doc?
beautiful. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You'll, I mean, you'll even <laughs> see that effect if you take a castor and whiskey and add 30% water to bring it down to 40%, it'll be clouded. I see. You'll see it very clearly. So we have a question from yeah. Donner Pass Whiskey. So why is Glen Droning 12 43% ABV and unchill filtered? That does so there, yeah, love the question. Yes, that is a good question. Now, that is, there's a fine line there. So anything below 40% absolutely has to be. Now, depending on your barreling, depending on your distillation, your distillate, um, especially if you use, I know, uh, is that Glen Marangi? Glen Dronick. You're talking about the, the, now you're getting into a different question yeah, on the shape of their, sh- their stills, still shape right? shape and everything, and it's also the, the barrels. If they're new barrels, maybe they'll get more protein, maybe they'll, they're distillate, and that I don't know exactly where you get, where you get that fine line. Anything above 40%, you, 46%, never have to chill filter it. Below 40, or at the 40%, Always. So and there is a, a there line. is a threshold of mandatory chill filtering, and some, is there a window of I could I couldn't? Yeah, that forty six to forty percent, depending on your new make. It's all about your make and what you're putting into that barrel. Practice so, is forty six. So this may yeah. be a uh, an industrial processes question where you're like, you know, we've set these bottles out at forty three percent. Everything seems to be cool. We're not going to worry about it. Or, and, and it or, can be, or there's a little bit of sediment that comes out, but nobody seems to mind. So, so the, if you take that 43% ABV Glendronic and put it in the in the in the refrigerator, it may go cloudy on. You know, if you're if you're, if you're drinking it on a cold day, it may go cloudy, but because you're right at that threshold where it could it could essentially chill filter or it could it could come out of solution. But when you talk about the, the distillation process. In other words, distillery one might distill at a higher ABV than distillery two, depending on the shape of their stills and the angle of their lye arm. Their distillate might come out at a higher ABV. That, that doesn't matter true? because they everybody barrels at the same ABV. I no, they don't. Per, they do yeah. pretty much at what sixty eight or sixty four. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. Be, because that way, if if they're exchanging barrels, it's it's the same. Fun. But the direction of the line arm does matter there, though, because it, you it all comes out. It may come out a different. It may come out of the still a different ABV, and depending on the line arm, depending on the shape, you may push some of those proteins up and, and other chem- chemicals up over through the distillate. And if you have a, a line arm that goes down, you may carry some of those compounds over more. You may carry more of those compounds over into your whiskey. That'll so your new make will have more. Flavor more compound. So if you have an arm that's more in an, an upwards trajectory, yes. you're not going to get as many proteins and things carrying over. So there's up. not as much stuff to come out of solution at the end. Of yes. Product. I mean, so all that it depends on the shape of the still, the direction of the line arm, the temperature you distill, where you cut. All that is. Does the type of te- but does the type of heating matter too? I mean, because you get up to temperature quicker or, or slower. Or I, I need to do a little more research on that. Most people use steam heat to to heat the stills it's a little could bit, it affect it yes it could because it could you could get burning and things in the pot if you're using I, too, too, too yeah i would think heat. you'd want to do an indirect heat source to you know cut a lot down of on that. there are a lot of stills that they still fire directly fire the still yeah. so eric so there's other kinds of filtering what do you have some suggestions or some ideas behind that well it could other be just like a filter. barrier filter right well i mean you want to most whiskey as it comes out even the barrel cast cast strength they put it through some sort of filter to remove Char from the barrel and right. floaties in the barrel, and whatever. All that garbage that's in there. So you got Wood strainers splitters. and things like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would need to do more research on the filtration processes, but yeah, the, everybody okay. does basic filtering. Some kind of filtering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They don't just take it from the, from the barrel and put it right in the, in the bottle. Take, take it from me. When you break a barrel apart, there's still booze in it. It's uh, kind of nasty. Junk. There's a lot of junk. Like, yeah, there's well, there's floating stuff. You, you were like licking the wood, weren't you? <laughs> like, you were <laughs> still where they're emptying the barrels. So they'll, they'll take the bung out of the barrel, they'll roll it over the the emptying spot, and you'll see sediment coming out of it. Sure. So everybody filters to some extent. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Because well, you thanks. have to. Thanks, Dr. Scotch. Very, very enlightening. We well, appreciate Dr. Scotch. Always enlightening. I'll take, I'll take enlightening. a glass here and maybe take a sip of that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you next week. Good to see you, Dr. Scotch. <laughs> Dr. Scotch is a scientist, not a tech guy. So we'll see. They call me Dr. Scotch. Oh, man. Uh, we love him.
It's all you know? good. So questions, comments, concerns. I someone asked us if we were going to Austin. Whiskey Crusaders. I don't know. I it's not looking promising. And I yeah, it does. I, I got. I, the the, the reason isn't because we don't want to go. It's because of availability and just life. I mean, we're busy as all get out right now. We've got so much stuff in the um, works here. Just we can't keep up. That's uh, problem, yeah, right? I mean, and uh, honestly, j- just to take the personal side of it, I mean, just tonight. Three of the four dummies were at the high school for back to parent night. You know, no, we're, all we're, four of us. Well, no, you you were there. We were all right, four there. We yeah. at the high school tonight. So uh, we're life is is kind of getting in the way <laughs> as far as yeah. regular day jobs and, and and kids and whatnot. But we're actually pretty busy on the Scotch for Dummies front. We've got a lot of things lined up, actually. Look, guys, we're we're seriously we're still working on this tour thing, and it is coming together. We've got some interesting things. There's some interesting emails that are coming across. We're, we're still pulling this together actually we've got a call we got to schedule up with the tour yeah. company they want so it's not that um we don't want to go to austin it's that we're not able to get able to time and financial every waking or every available penny that we've got for scotch for dummies right now is got one target in mind scotland. and that's the tour yep. to scotland Everything. um and by second priority, if there was a penny left over, it's going to a barrel of whiskey. We're yeah. buying a barrel somehow, some way. I don't care what the... <laughs> everything we make via Patreon, everything right. we make via we're, YouTube is going towards our fund. It's going to happen. Everything. So, I, I mean, that's... Uh, Austin, it, what sucks is everybody's going to be at Austin. There's going to be a ton of people at Austin, yeah. a ton of whiskey tubers. And, and I want to... <laughs> I, I really do... Talk yes. to everyone. Yeah. And, and do some collaborations, cross paths, sit down, talk, you know, shop behind well, the camera. That cameras. stuff is fun. But at the end of the day, I just don't know. I just don't see it. But we will do to, to try and help that because we definitely are going to miss out and just hanging with people. I think we're going to do an indie hookup sometime soon if we can in the next couple of months. If you happen to be around in the area, we're going to meet somewhere. We haven't decided what yet, but I know we got some indie folks here, maybe some people from Chicago. I think uh, Ohio, I, um, Malted Man Cave, and. Um, um, uh, Mashed and Drum, and then also I Wish Kiss You Wines from uh, yep. Kentucky are going to come up. So we're going to do something kind of locally here because it'll make it easier for us to do a day or so. Because those big trips are, I mean, it's a big commitment to we time and it. money. We can't do it. So, but um, yeah, we're looking forward to that and hanging out with you guys. I mean, it's a lot of fun, right? It's, it's, oh, yeah, sharing man. Sharing whiskey is what it's all well, about. Well, and getting together with people that you only know, <laughs> like, know going on and there. it doesn't matter if it's subscribers or whatever. Yeah. Uh, getting together with people that you really know on online. And you've talked to, and you've, you've got a rapport with, and then you get to meet them in person. Like, that's really cool. Yep. I mean, and, and actually being able to sit down and have a, a dram with them and, and get to actually discuss something and have a conversation, because it's different in it's person. completely different in person. I mean, even if you're just running into subscribers, people you talk to and see on your channel all the time, it's, it's an awesome experience. We've done it, and we, you know, we're going to continue to do it. I, we go out of our way for it. If any one of you guys are coming to Indianapolis, we'll, we'll figure out a way to cross yep. paths. Uh, that's happened, and it's going to continue to happen. I just don't know if Austin's going to make it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not a, a lack of desire, guys. It's a, a lack <laughs> so, of life. So just a shameless plug, if, you're, if you happen to not be a patron, we'd love to have support because everything we do right now, uh, you guys are really kind of the lifeline for us, and it's really helping out. So Absolutely. You know, five bucks a month or whatever you can afford would be great. Just putting it out there. Yep. Um, and join the podcast. Mm. We love the podcast. I may What's actually do a podcast, like just a little bonus podcast for a little what bit, just to, just to oh, have a little really? something. You got that going on? It's possible. Just to just to have something extra on the podcast that's not on the YouTube right. channel. Right, you and, know and what I'll I mean? say, I think why you should take is, off in the whole, hi, in the news today, I'm... <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. You're a podcaster. You listen to podcasts. I mean, seriously, I, I like Sean, it. Sean listens to podcasts on his on, on on the regular day, and so I'm not surprised that you want to put a little effort. Ah, cool. I'm dying to see what happens with it. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah. fun. It's a good time. So you know, if you like podcasts, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you watch that stuff. Um, listen to that stuff, I guess. Hey, um, real quick, man, what did yeah. you get on this? It's good. it's. Fruit just, oh my yeah. gosh, is like, it ever? Like I mean, a, it's like grapes. And, it's yeah. like, yeah, it was right? richer than I remember it being. It, so, it was pretty full bodied. Rudy, fresh the, and fruity. The, the, the <laughs> compass box, Stranger and Stranger. You know, it's a blended, so it's 
Scotch malt whiskey <laughs> blended with wheat and barley spirit. So it's not technically a scotch. It's technically not scotch. We're not claiming it is. But so, it's a John Glazier production. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So Michael is, it's funny, Sunday evening scotch. I can't wait for him to have his own YouTube channel pretty soon. He's the funny guy. He wants to know, you know, which dummy is not pouring a Sean That would be me, probably. That's a great question. I think that's an awesome topic. I may have to do a podcast on that. Do you know what? I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll step right into it. I might not show, pour a shampoo every time. That's because I'm already thinking about the next glass. I, I'm more, I, I, so I don't pour quantity per dram. I pour quantity per bottle. I'm, I'm all about the variety, especially on this bar. Now, you come over to my house where it's just me <laughs> drinking, and, and yeah, I pour myself a healthy box, uh, dram because I'm too lazy to get up and pour another Fair one. Fair enough. But sitting here, I'm like... Well, I don't want to overload on this because I want some of that. But then I want some of that. Yeah, yeah. well, that's the thing. Yeah, when, I, when I'm at home, I pour, you know, I pour little bitty pours because oh, I, I want to taste a bunch of different bottles. And all my go all out. I'm like, whatever. I don't have to get up again. <laughs> you know who I'm sure is pouring good pours this week? It's KB. KB in mm. Scotland. He's having a good I, time. I'm sure he's going to catch up with this tomorrow. I hope he's enjoying himself. It looks like he's enjoying himself. Looks like weather's good, so... Whiskey Crusaders bet. What's that? It says if we yeah. have to come through DFW, let him know. All right, well, Fair enough. That. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we'll lift to we're the nearest that. bar and... <laughs> DFW w is in the middle of nowhere, though. So we're we won't lift to the nearest bar. You can lift to the airport and we'll get drunk there. <laughs> Fair enough. That works. Um, so uh, uh, what do we got com- coming up, though? We've talked uh, about what we're drinking, all this. Uh, as far as reviews, guys, and what's on the horizon, actually, good good segue. There's a couple of um, patron-only. We, we mentioned becoming. There's a couple of patron-only videos coming out. I actually have one that I shot with my wife. Um, we compared a couple of um, really old Glendros that are uh, single casks, and I was really curious to get her, partake, uh, her intake or input on it. So I'm going to produce that to patron-only. I know that we've all got different styles or topics of videos that we want to start doing. We want to start pushing those towards patrons just to give the patrons something else, um, some more content because I mean, you know, they support Honestly, support patrons are lifelines. So, right. I mean, we, we, we do need to put more effort in that area. Right. We, we recognize that. So. But as far as mo- weekly videos, what do we have on the horizon? Well, we've got at least another Old Pultney coming out. Uh, I think that's coming out next week, I think. Oh, Pony what? Uh, it's the 18. 18, 18, 18 baby. 18. 18. Okay. Besides that, we actually need to shoot some stuff. Well, so what do we need to shoot? Let's talk. What, what do you guys want to see? I mean, honestly, we've got a plethora. Well, what, what movie is that here, for? Let's have them pick right now. <laughs> you, oh, my God. Come on. I have a plethora. Three Amigos. Oh, Senor El Guapo. That's a male plane. Okay, so the wheels are coming off now when movie quotes are coming out anyway, like that. So we've got a plethora of, of scotch back here to, to, to review. I'll tell you what, what let's you guys put a vote out. I'll, I'll, let's pick three scotches when we're done here. We'll talk about it on our Patreon only after show on Discord. If you're not on Discord, you should definitely sign up for that. Um, but we'll have a post out there, and we'll have you guys vote and say which ones you want to come see next. Yep. Yeah, because well, yeah, honestly, we, we've got a lot. I, we, i got to look on the spreadsheet because I don't even know what we have. We've got quite a few. Oh, yeah. We, we no, we've, we've got a bunch. Right. I just don't know what we huh? have. Yeah. Yeah. I see a couple of unopened well, bottles no, right there that I want to open right now. This hey, Bob. Review. Are you still online, Bob? If you're still online, can yeah. I open that McKellen Classic Cut and have a pull of it, even though we haven't reviewed it? No. No. Come on, Bob. Say yes. No. Just say yes. Just leave it. <laughs> Why? Because I've nice got Bob. I've got eighty open bottles. Bob. Drink something else. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Bob. Hey, people, Frank Lampard. What's you know up? What you like people are really interested in the podcast, the Sean Poor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> So you know what else people are interested in? Oh, you know Where's what? my wounded zebra t-shirt? Holy crap, you know what we forgot to do? The giveaway. The giveaway. Right? Right. That's what I pointed and said, Joe. Let's pick our winner right now. And there you go. There you go. Are you ready? A little drum roll. Greg Bowers. Pick a winner. Drum roll. Pick a winner. Oh, my gosh. Greg, come Guess on. who win? Who? Greg Bowers. No way! There you go. I, dude, if I just called that, I need to go play the lottery. What the Greg, heck? How'd you do no, that? No, you just spent all of somebody's luck. Wow, Greg. <laughs> 
I don't know. It was just reading his, reading his name. Looks like we got the extremely rare 18 is going to Greg. All right, Greg. I hope you don't have it. Or if you do, you're getting a two ounce sample we'll of us. We'll have to to uh, exchange that. You can come by and pick this one up. Yep. We like <laughs> local guys. Oh, that would nice cool. be Greg. That would be cool. The bar. The bar <laughs> yeah. I almost forgot. <laughs> I didn't forget. I was trying to show it to you. Mark was flagging um, you. Wow, that was kind of cool. Mark was flagging um, us. What? Yeah, All right. Yeah, of course I was. Anyway, so next week, guys, let's talk about that just to make sure that everybody. Well, it's really next week. Honestly, it really boils down to we're we're all traveling for work, so yeah. I I have no idea if we'll be able to do. It. I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not. So it's really if you can do it, great. If we'll, not, we'll, we'll see, what see what we can put together. I, I'm not going to guarantee anything because between me talking, which doesn't happen a lot. And me doing that, which doesn't happen a lot, it may be <laughs> well. Maybe we'll happen. have a guest guest uh, sponsor how, that night. You can be part of the show. How about uh, okay. if Andrew can't get it together? Maybe we could do a live show on the weekend, which we don't normally do, but we could do a quick one, um, and we could catch the European people yeah. that we don't normally see. So oh, maybe we'll try and arrange. We'll try and arrange something. We'll figure something out. No, Donner, we don't gas most. Uh, honestly, most of the ones that were that need to be reviewed haven't been opened. The ones that have been opened, we hit pretty heavily. The, I mean, the ones that are open are nervous zebras. Yeah, they're nervous. dancing around. They're what, prancing what's, around. What's that seals they heard they're something nervous. in the grass. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's we do a pretty good job of going through it. <laughs> I mean, I need a caricature character of Sean <laughs> over in the zebra bottle. Just blasting it. Can, can you make it like baby penguins too, or uh, baby <laughs> seals? <laughs> baby <laughs> seals. We're gonna, no. get, we're gonna get some kind of. Lost Peter's gonna hate Peter us. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that drunk guy beating right. that seal well, to death? We're, 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 we're out of topics tonight. I think it's time to close the show, out, gentlemen. Well, All thank right. everybody so, for uh, joining us this evening. We really appreciate it, as usual. Yep. Yeah, things are going good. We appreciate the support, you guys. We appreciate the uh, the reviews, the likes, the subs, everything. Um, I don't know what else to say. The podcast is going really well. So if you're listening on podcast, we really appreciate you guys listening. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out and get a hold of us in any of the methods that we have. Because um, we're always looking for other content, other ideas. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Discord. You can find us, obviously, on YouTube, um, Gmail, uh, scottsherdummies at gmail.com, and Twitter, of course. Yep, sure. There you go. And we All apologize right. if, we, if you had a comment or a question and we didn't get to it. We do the we best we can. Yeah. Any questions hey, or suggestions? You, know, you have two ways to do it. You can always email us. Or honestly, the best thing to do is it's a living organism is Discord. I mean, there's literally hundreds of people talking in our channel all the time. We have yeah. different channels set up for Scotch review questions, suggestions. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Even, even music. music. <laughs> so right. if you're not on Discord, you are missing out on our live community. It's, right. it's, it's, it's hilarious. hilarious. Right. So, so, all right, guys. That. Hey, Greg, look for this, buddy. We need to contact you. We'll see you guys Watch next cheers. week. Cheers. I guess I'll try this. Yep. <laughs>